Hi everybody. This video is going to be about how to use the counterexample method to prove invalidity. Remember that um, a valid argument is one in which true premises guarantee the truth of the conclusion. So in this method, what we do is we take a complex argument that we might not know the truth values of the, of the premises and conclusion, and then we, we maintain the same structure but we create another counterexample using different subject and predicate classes that um, definitely shows that true premises can lead to a false conclusion. Whenever we can do that, we've shown that the argument is invalid. So let's start with uh, number eight here. Some toxic dumps are sites that emit hazardous wastes and some sites that emit hazardous wastes are undesirable places to live. Thus, some toxic dumps are undesirable places to live near. Okay, so if we have this argument, some T R E, premise one, some E R U, undesirable places to live, some E R U, thus, remember thus is a conclusion indicator word, some T R U. This is the structure of the argument, right? So remember, validity and invalidity is based on structure. So what we need to do now is replace T's, E's, and U's with classes that we all know the truth value for. So for example, if I say some dogs are mammals, so T's now are dogs and E's are mammals. And that is a true statement, right? Remember that in um, logic, sum just means at least one. So this is saying at least one dog is a mammal. It's true, they all are, and there's billions of them. Well, maybe millions, I don't know, there might be billions. All right, so if E is mammals, then we would have to put mammals in the same spot in premise two, because as you can see here in premise two, we have E. So if E is mammal here, E has to be mammal here. Now U is a different class. Notice that T is down here. So T dogs will be in our conclusion, and whatever we place as U here will be the conclusion here. So, but we need to create another true statement. So some mammals are cats. That's also true. Uh, some of the mammals that exist are cats. All right, so if T is dogs and U is cats, then the final conclusion would be some dogs are cats. Well, we know that's, false no matter what. By definition, a dog can't be a cat, cat can't be a dog. All right, so what we've, what we've done here is we've maintained the same structure as the toxic dump sites and the uninhabitable places to live. And we've created an argument that has true premises and a false conclusion. Thus, we know that the original argument could be true, true, false. Thus, it's invalid. Because the definition of, is, of an invalid argument uh, deductive argument form is one in which it's possible to have true premises and a false conclusion. Let's do another problem. All persons who assist others in suicide are people guilty of murder. Sorry, I just realized that I haven't been here with all of you. Come on, man. Uh, there we go. Let's try it again. Okay. All persons who assist others in suicide are people guilty of murder. Accordingly, some individuals motivated by compassion are not persons guilty of murder, inasmuch as some people who assist others in suicide are individuals motivated by compassion. Um, okay, so first thing we need to do is find the conclusion. All right, this is a, a little tricky because of the language, but uh, accordingly is a conclusion indicator. And in as much is similar to because. Um, so the first uh, proposition here is actually a premise. What comes after um, accordingly is the conclusion. And the second premise is, is right here. So I'm gonna uh, formulate this using our uh, letters. 
Okay, so all persons who assist others, dot, dot, dot. So all suicide assisters are guilty of murder. Uh, the second premise is some people who assist are individuals motivated by compassion. So some who suicide assisters are compassionate. That's listed here. And then finally, um, accordingly, some individuals motivated by compassion, so some compassionate people are not, not, that's important, are not guilty of murder. And so essentially, here we have the structure of the argument. Now, again, remember, to, uh, we need to uh, replace the subject and predicate classes with things that uh, we all know to be true or false. And what we're trying to do is create two uh, premises that lead to a, a false conclusion. You'll see I'm working with dogs. Uh, you can work with whatever you want, plants, uh, animals, humans, um, whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, but so, uh, all dogs are mammals. Let's say that. We know that that's a true statement. Um, so here S is dogs and G becomes mammals. So then um, if we know S is dogs, then this has to be some dogs are. And now we have a new class, a new predicate class here. So think of, uh, try to think of a C group that would be, um, that would make this a true statement. Some dogs are bloodhounds. We know that's a true statement. So here, if you use any specific species of dog, uh, <clears throat> I guess they're all the same species, but any specific type of dog, uh, it would be true. So, okay, so we know that S and S are already up here. So dogs and dogs, that, that works. We know that G is mammals and C is bloodhounds. So we have to put bloodhounds here and mammals here. Let's see if it ends up being false. Some bloodhounds are not mammals. Well, that's patently false. All bloodhounds have to be mammals because they're dogs and all dogs are mammals. All right, so what we've shown here is that this structure is invalid because it's possible to have true premises and a false conclusion. All right, one more. Okay, so, um, no movie producers are uncompetitive business executives, and some Hollywood moguls are movie producers. It follows that no Hollywood moguls are uncompetitive business executives. It follows that, remember, is a uh, conclusion indicator, thus. Um, and so let's uh, fill out the skeletal structure. All right, this is a tricky one, and they did this on purpose. And it's a good one, because it allows me to explain something that's important. It's really important that you use uh, letters that don't overlap, that you use three separate letters. What I mean by that, sorry, I'm trying to is that there are a couple things in this argument. Movie producers you might make as M, but then you might also put Hollywood moguls as M. If you were to do that, you would end up with four M's in here, and that would not be right. So you need two, uh, two of each term. And we'll talk in the future. We won't get into it about the, um, uh, the major, the minor, and the middle term. Um, that hasn't really been introduced yet. Uh, <clears throat> but anyway, we need two of each. So no movie producers are uncompetitive people. No M are you. Some Hollywood moguls are movie producers. So I've Hollywood moguls I've listed as H, some HRM. Therefore, it follows that no Hollywood moguls, remember H, not M, are uncompetitive. No H are you. All right, let's see if we can figure out how to make true premises and a false conclusion. So this one's a little bit different, a little bit more complex. If we start with no people who die are people who are alive. So M are people who die and U are people who are alive. That is a true statement. So here, if we say some humans 
are people who die. That is also a true statement. Remember, some just means that there is at least one, and there have been billions in the history of humanity. So if, so we need no H are you. So if H is humans, no humans are, U is people who are alive. So no people who die are people who are alive. Some humans are people who die. Therefore, no humans are people who are alive is false. So here we have two true premises followed by a false conclusion. Thus, this argument form is invalid. Thus, this argument is invalid. Okay, I hope that that helps uh, with an understanding of the counterexample method for determining invalidity of deductive arguments. Have a great day.